This episode is brought to you by Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard of Anchor, you should definitely check them out. It's a super easy tool that anyone can use to create and distribute their podcast. It has everything you need, and you can do it all from your computer or even your phone. Need your podcast cover art? There's a tool. Music and sound effects? They have you covered. Want to record on the fly? It's easy with the app. Now you may be saying to yourself, I already have a podcast. No worries. Just create your account, upload, and publish to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Looking for some walking around money? Anchor connects you with advertisers who match your brand. It's a one-stop shop for all of your podcasting needs. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You're listening to Biz Quick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. Biz Quick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real-world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the Biz Quick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Welcome to BizQuick. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And on today's episode, we're going to talk again about mental toughness, self-talk, and all of that. And you might be asking yourself, why are we talking about this again? Well, somebody might have deleted the original recording on accident. So guess what? Julie and I are recording this again. But it's going to be even better than the first one, but you won't know. It always is better than the first one, but yeah, you will not know. Yeah. So anyway, welcome, Julie. Welcome, Corey. I I'm equally excited to talk about this today because I I think it's an important topic and it's one that a lot of people struggle with um, that negative self talk and how to get yourself out of it and I've had a lot of interesting conversations around it and but I would like to start by talking about your lack of self talk. What about it? Well, I just I'm I'm just always fascinated by it. Right. The fact that you don't really have an internal monologue. That's right. And I think it's just as odd that other people do. Well, you are the only person on the planet who doesn't. Well, I wouldn't say I'm the only person, but uh, it was it wasn't until we really got into into the thick of things with SP Pace that this was like kind of a discovery that was made for both of us that yeah. I don't have an inner monologue. And I was like, wait, people actually talk to themselves. Yeah. I was amazed that you made it this far in life without realizing that that happens to people. But I, I mean, I can remember exactly where we were and what we were doing when we had the conversation and it was just so, I don't like confusing to me when you were like, I don't do that. Right. Cause I was telling you how much I, like kind of yell at myself internally for, you know, for things. And I get like, I really beat myself up and you were just, you were equally confused. Like, why would you do that? Yeah. Just stop doing it. (laughs) Yes. If only it were that easy. Right. Yeah. So, um, and then you, you know, confirmed with your brother that in fact, other people do do it. Yeah. And it's one of those things where like, I don't, I've said it before, I'm sure we said it on the podcast, like for me, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Like I don't dwell on things at all. You know, I, I obviously I do have, uh, like I'm aware of my actions and how they affect other people. And, and are all of you? That. I am. But <laughs> the, the difference is it doesn't really bother me how it affects others. I'm aware that it affects others. But that makes it, you sound like a psychopath. I know. I'm well aware <laughs> of that. But, but that's what it is. Like, because uh, that conversation I had with my brother where he was like, he, he gets all, uh, he gets, he worries a lot and he thinks about this. And if I do this, what is this person going to think or whatever? And, and for me, like, it's like, there's, there's the calculations. There's the, 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 I'm not, I'm not just like running through life blindly. Like I understand what I'm doing, but I'm also like, I'm not going to dwell on the, the outcomes because at that point the outcome it's already happened. I can't go back in time and change anything. So no that, reason to like beat yourself up over something that's you can't change now. That must be so freeing. It's not bad. It's not bad. I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> so I know, you know, I also really, I, I want to question on something though, just to like really make sure that there's no self-talk that happens. Okay. So I want to talk about a little adventure that you went on just about a year ago. 
right? It was, I think, early last June. You went down to Rome, Georgia, mm-hmm. and hung out with um, Chad Wright and some other folks. And um, you did a little shooting, and then you went on this really fun 26 mile, 28 miles, 28 mile hike slash run. It was pitched to me as a 28 mile hike. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand that hike also meant run. <laughs> you were unprepared in many ways. Extremely unprepared, yes. Yes. And um I I listen, I this is when you first told me this story, I was actually angry, be, not at you, but at the situation, but now it's become one of my favorite stories because there's so much humor to it. But you were on that first mile in the first mile. Yeah. And we're like, nope. <laughs> yeah, I was less than 128th of the way done. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I've made a mistake. <laughs> yes. Um, but there was no turning back. No, there's no turning back. And so at that point, it's like I've made the commitment. So, like, there's no reason to, like, think about, like, I can't change what has happened. I mean, of course, I could I could quit at whatever point. I could, I mean, there are options. But for me, I was like, well, I, I said I was going to do this. So I'm just going to go do it. Um, I also found out to that, that day that I am. Um, have a little lactose intolerance, which that was a fun thing to discover. <laughs> and let's talk about that in another podcast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but you know, you said it, you learn a lot about yourself on that. And one for me, you shouldn't eat cheese before you go on a 28 mile run. <laughs> but what's amazing to me is that there wasn't like this, I don't know, like screaming or this self-talk in your head to try and get you through it. There was just like, to me, it would become like 28 miles, a lot of that is mental. Oh, it totally is. But it, it was, I mean, I did a, a very, I mean, not, uh, it was a quarter of the distance in, in Zion National Park. And it was, it was six or seven miles straight up, just switchback after switchback after switchback. And again, it's one of those, th- it's like, I, I don't know. There's no, there's no talking or anything. It's just like turn the corner and be like, another switchback. Okay. You know, whatever. It's, yeah, it's like, when does it end? Yeah, and it, like, I mean, for that, like, I mean, obviously, like, it, yeah, I don't know. There, there's there's just no, like, oh, you got this, or, oh, I can't believe you're so dumb. It's just, just like, it, it's, that's just what, I'm dealing with what is, what is real in front of me. And there's no, there's no, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I, it's just, it's kind of fascinating to me, and. Because I think so much for for me, if we're if you know if we're you know talking in the same realm of like working out or running or it's certainly not twenty eight miles, but even like a, you know a you know three or five mile trail run, it's it's pretty much all it's all mental. Like because I know physically I can do that, but my head is telling me the whole time like you can't do this. Like what are you doing, right? And so I'm that's the battle that I'm having all the time, and I can't imagine that you went 28 miles and didn't have especially when first off you didn't know what really you were getting yourself into right and maybe that was a benefit though would you have said yes had you known it was a 20 mile run (laughs) well i mean i knew it was 28 miles yeah i did the running part that was new information when we got there but um, you know, as I did said in the blog or whatever got to the, the first mile and a quarter get to the top of this hill and normally in a hike or, or anything like that, you get to the top and the there's two two like prizes for getting to the top. It's getting a break to look at a view or whatever, and then the downhill, which is supposed to be easy. But that's when I found out, oh no, we run the downhills. That's fun. <laughs> I'm like, why the hell are we running? <laughs> Did but, you at least get the first prize? Did you get to enjoy the view? Oh no. Oh because everybody was waiting on me. So I got to the top and they're like, all right, we gotta keep going. I'm like, oh, okay. No, I got, I got, I did get the uh, Chad point out. He's like, you see that, that ridge over there? And I'm like, yeah, he's like, all right, the one behind it, that's where we're going. I'm like, oh, great. (laughs) Uh, But, but yeah, I mean, like even halfway through, uh, if there was any, if there was ever a time that I might have like quit, it was like right around the 14 mile mark. I had rolled both my ankles partially going, we're like, we're going down a hill and we came up to this road and I knew that, oh, I'm at a road. I could potentially like, like, I don't have to worry about, like, a, you know, a rescue team coming to get me in the woods. Like, I'm on the side of the road. I could figure this out. But no, like, at that point, I was like, all right, well, halfway there. 
Oh, well. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Just... yeah. But, it, you know, it's interesting. And I've, I had a conversation last week with a friend who was telling me how he is just, like, almost paralyzed with, like, the things that he says to himself. And so... You know, I'm like, I want to dig a little deeper into this. What what types of things do you say to yourself, right? And um, he's talking about, like, your your this business idea is dumb, and this will never be successful, and people aren't ever really going to buy this, and you're not smart enough to run a business, and what are you doing, and all these things. And I was, um, well, first, a little taken aback because you know that I would have never guessed that that was what was happening in the in this guy's head, and second, I thought, like, would you ever allow anyone to talk to you that way? And I'm going to tell you what he said after we take a quick break. We wanted to take a quick break to tell you about our newest course called Time Bomb. If you're ready to take control of your calendar, this course is for you. We guide you through all the steps you need to understand where you're spending your time, what your time is worth, and how to build out your days and weeks so that you can add more value to your business or just spend that time enjoying life. We have three options for you. The course, a bundle which includes products designed to help you become more efficient with your time, and a boot camp where you'll get time in a small group setting to get the personalized help you need. Head on over to sbpace.com to learn more. Time Bomb. Take control of your calendar, gain control of your life. All right, we're back. Now I'm going to end that suspenseful story for you and tell you. Um, except for I don't remember what I was talking about that break was so long. Would you ever let somebody... <laughs> oh, yeah, would you Would you ever let someone say those things to you, right? So, like, we, we have a tendency, for those of us who talk to ourselves negatively in our head, Corey... We have a tendency to say things that we wouldn't say, we wouldn't let anyone else say to us. And we certainly, we wouldn't say them to someone else, right? Like they're, they're just things that most people wouldn't really ever utter to someone else or put up with somebody telling, like, if you were like, Julie, you're so stupid. You're, I'd be like, fuck off. I am not right. Well, no, I would, I would, I, I don't know that I would say those words. I'm going to try that out. (laughs) (laughs) But, but. I, and I don't tend to tell myself that I'm stupid. I know there are things that I, you know, need need to work on in terms of like getting better at. But, but I, my point is this: like we talk to ourselves in ways that we would never let anyone else do it, and for some reason we think that it's okay. We just like rent out this space. And I was telling him the story of um, when we first started SB Pace, and. I was really, I wasn't nervous about starting SB Pace. I mean, it was in some ways because it was a really big, um, you know, thing that we were doing. But I was nervous because there was somebody that um, is, you know, both of us have worked with in the past who I had given way too much mental space to in my head. Not getting a name on our podcast, but I spent way too much time worrying about this person like, checking up what I was doing, checking on what I was doing on LinkedIn and all these things. And finally, one day you were just like, why do you even care what this person thinks? Like, like, why do you care? Like you're, they're not even in your network anymore. And I'm like, you're right. Like, why do I care? Right. So I kind of needed that like push of like, you're being ridiculous about this, but when it happens in your own head, you don't have somebody to give you that push to say like, why are you letting like your internal bully live rent, rent free in your head like 24 seven? I don't know why you let yourself have an internal bully. Well, I'm, right. I'm joking. I don't know. Yeah. No, I know you are. But but I mean, you you wouldn't understand. Right. Because you don't have one. Maybe it's because you have an external bully. No, you, you are a bully. I, I bully people. I know. That's what I'm saying. Oh, because I'm an external bully. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah, no. Yes. Maybe maybe that's why you don't have an internal bully. No. No. Okay. No. Anyway, um, but I had given this friend some some tips that I thought, I want to get your take on what you think of these, right? Okay. Okay. So one of the things that I, I asked him, when do you um, most kind of talk really negative to yourself? And he said what I strongly suspected was 
he does it in the morning. First wakes up and he's, you know, thinking about his day and he's just beating himself up like relentlessly. And I said, okay, so in the morning when you get up for like three or four days, I'm like, I don't think you'll have to do it more frequently than this. Write down like all those like really shitty things that you're saying to yourself in your head, put them on paper, write them about yourself, write them. And I'm like, and then read them. And I'm like, and I, I'm like, I cannot help but think that that will put a stop or at least minimize it. Right. And cause I thought if I was, you know, if I read all these horrible things that I was saying about myself in my head, if I read them to myself out loud, I, it probably would make me double, double back and be like, whoa, his concern was that, well, first, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think that's a, great idea because you're making this imaginary person in your head <laughs> but you're, you're making it real like it's written down like it's yeah. physical it's something that you can grasp it, it would it's not the same as somebody saying it to your face but sure I think that's a great a great way to to I, I, it's like almost laughing at yourself kind of a little bit a little bit but I, I think that when you well the same idea of laughing at yourself like when you like if you're walking on the sidewalk and you trip and you stumble or whatever instead of getting pissed off you're like oh idiot <laughs> yeah. and laugh and just yeah, keep going yes. you know yes okay yes i would agree with that his concern was that if he wrote it down and read it to himself he would validate the feelings and make it worse okay and then i was like oh, i guess i could see that um i hadn't i hadn't really thought about it that way i also you know told him to start looking for some like pattern and inter- pattern disruptors right so when you catch yourself doing it and it's really hard at first to reel it like you know you're doing it but to like it's almost like that meditation thing right where you meditate and you can't start out meditating at 20 minutes you got to start out meditating at like a minute because meditation is hard because you're supposed to be without thought right you're supposed to focus on your breath so i i kind of gave the the tip of start to notice when it happens and then Put yourself into an activity or doing something, listening to something that like takes you out of that thought, right? So for me, if I'm going to do it, if I catch myself like talking trash to myself, I, um, which is ironic because I don't really talk, talk trash to people. I mean, I tried talking trash to the DeGroff, DeGroff brothers the other day and that failed every time I tried. So, so I don't do it. Um, I, but if I, catch myself doing it and then I turn on really loud music like I'll stop instantly and it takes me out of it right but you the key is you have to catch yourself and much like meditation it's like building a muscle you have to do it over and over and over over time right like you can't you might catch it three percent of the time when you're first doing it and then maybe you'll get to 50 and then eventually you pretty much will just like not be doing it or very infrequently. Well, meditation is something else I don't understand. But maybe that's because I'm just in a meditative state all the time. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> possibly. And then here's here's the, here's another thing that um, I find this works really well. Um, this is going to be new information for you. You don't know that I do this. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to be very curious about your thoughts on it. Because you know I like to get your input on things. Sure. Hey, are you familiar with like... Um, like frequency music, we're going to call it? No. Okay. So now you have Spotify, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I have Amazon Music, and I, um, if when I go into listen to music, I can just do a search on, like, I'll put in, like... A genre or something. No, you can, but that's not what I do. I'll put in, like, I've done some research, and I've got some, uh, I know all these frequencies, but I did some research for my friend while I was on the phone with him. So if you put, if I search on 852 HZ, it will bring up frequ- frequency music that basically eight, 852 eight megahertz sure. is designed specifically that when you listen to it to help you with anxiety and depression and like, basically like like give you mental clarity and and help build mental toughness and so there's a whole bunch of like obviously there's there's hundreds of them 
And um, There's I was at least 852 of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was telling him that the first time that I listened to it, the first time that I did it, um, I was listening to one and, and I was, I was working. It's the only thing I can listen to while I'm working that doesn't actually distract me from work. Right. But there's no, there's no words in it. It's all like chimes and bells and like Tibetan humming. We'll, we'll listen to it when we're done. Well, just, just a sample of it so you can see. Okay. And anyway, the first time that I listened to it, I literally, like, I thought I was going to vomit. Like, I could, like, I could feel it, like, in my chest. And my I thought I was going to vomit. I got nauseous and dizzy. And I thought, well, I'm pretty sure that's not how I'm supposed to feel. But I, So I could only listen to it for, like, five or ten minutes. But now, I listen to it all night long. I sleep to it. Huh, that's interesting. I mean, I guess it's kind of the same concept of like white noise or whatever, mm-hmm. where, you know. Yeah. That's okay. Was yeah. that all the tips you gave him then? Because we're, well, we need to start wrapping this up kind of, but I feel like we need to give some sort of value other than, you know. You don't think I gave any value well, yet? No, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, I mean, like, kind of like, you know, here's the tips like, write your stuff down, find yeah. the music. Uh, yeah, pattern disruptor, okay, right? Yeah. Pattern disruptor is probably the biggest one, and that requires you to notice that you're doing it and just to be, like, more aware, right? I think the writing it down one, honestly, to me, that feels like the one that's going to help the fastest. But I also think that that, you know, the frequency music is a big help. And there's a lot of websites that you can go and just kind of do a search on and, and find. Because even if it... It's supposed to help. There's ones that help with like pain and all these different things. So it's just a very interesting concept. But yeah, I think from, you know, overall the whole, you know, mental, like how we talk to ourselves is really, is important, right? Because it says a lot about like how we present ourselves to the world, I think, right? Yeah. And I mean, I guess, that, yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. I was going to say I never thought about that, but I've never thought about any of this really, so. I know, because you don't experience yes. it. But it, it's, I, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, for for me, it, it, it's one of those things where I'm always, like, I understand that actions have consequences and all of that, but it's, I, I don't know, like, I guess maybe I still have that that like 14 year old kid jumping off a building mindset where it's like, yeah, you might break your leg when you land, but eh, we'll figure that out when, when we get down there. Like it, 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 I'm going to do something and, and it's gonna be a little more calculated than jumping off a building, but it's like, well, if it fails, it fails. If I do well, I do well. Yeah. And I, but I, I think so, I, but I, I think there's, it's possible to have both that think about that externally or like have that thought process, right? Okay. We're going to launch a business and if it fails, it fails and we're going to go do something else. And if it succeeds, then go us like we're brilliant. Right. But there's the, the whole entire path is filled with like decision points and micro wins and micro failures and massive failures and big wins. And all along the way, you know, there's, um, there are these opportunities where you are, if you are someone who talks to yourself negatively, where you can beat yourself up and, and, and bully yourself. And I think, you know, it's one of those situations where if you are the person who always has to stay busy, like if you can't sit down and rest, like you're running from something. And I think the depth to which you have, and again, I'm, I'm not a psychologist, right? Though I did spend a night at a Holiday Inn one time. Uh, I... Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> we used the sound effect. Um... I, I, um, I just think that when you are that negative self-talk, if it's really, really bad, it happens all the time and you're just like crushing yourself with it, that almost to the point where it becomes like debilitating to you, like there's a whole different problem going on there. Right. But there are things that we can do to, to eliminate and minimize self-talk and, I just gave you three hot tips. Yeah. So let's uh, let's stop the self-talk people or fix it or do whatever you need. I don't even know. <laughs> you can have positive self-talk, right? Are there people who do that? Like, are they like they... They're their own cheerleaders? Yeah. 
So, like, where you've got a bully, like, living inside of you, do people have cheerleaders living inside of them? I don't know. I, I don't, I honestly don't, I, I sometimes, like, I'm a cheerleader in my own head, right? But for the most part, like, that's a really, that, listen, the whole notion of, like, being an entrepreneur or, you know, a small business owner is a very, can be a very, very lonely path, Right. And it's, we say it all the time, it's a very hard path, it's difficult. And if you don't have the right support system in place that's cheering you on and saying positive things to you on occasion, and you're the type of person who beats yourself up in your head all the time, that's a very, very tough spot for people to land in, right? That's a very tough, that's, a, that's not a good place to be. So you've got to either... If you if you're not if you don't have the network that's going to support you and tell you like hey you know thanks or great job or whatever it is and you don't have the ability to tell yourself that you're gonna you got a long road in front of you. Well, because I feel like that was directed at me. I want to say thank you, Julie, for sharing today <laughs> <laughs> and leading this conversation because it would not have gone well with it just being me. It was not directed at you at all, though I could see how you thought that it was. <laughs> also, you were looking at me when you well, were saying that. I looked at you the entire time we're talking. I know, I know. <laughs> all right. But yeah, so thank you. Thank you to our listeners. And um, you can find out about um, our business in our show notes. Sure. <laughs> Maybe we'll drop a frequency in there. There you go. <laughs> Maybe we can put Julie's frequency playlist. Oh, perfect. No, he's shaking his head. No, that's not happening, friends. All right, you can connect with us on social media. We are on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and we have a YouTube channel. And gosh darn it, go subscribe to that YouTube channel. We're really trying to get to a million subscribers. That's our stretch goal. Our immediate help us to stop being losers goal is just to get to 100 go help us also you can reach us on sbpace.com and while you're listening to this podcast or any other pod just subscribe to ours like us and give us a review we appreciate you taking the time to let us know what you like or think about our uh podcast yeah we do we really appreciate it you can also reach out to us about topics if there's something you want to hear about if there are conversations that you really want Corey and i to tell or to tell to talk about sure. yes and or if you want to hear just more stories let us know um also we wrote a book it's a number one bestseller on amazon it's called seriously now what a small business guide to disaster preparedness it comes with a digital workbook and if you've already bought it go give us a review because we would really appreciate it that's it for today's podcast. I'm Corey. And I'm Dr. Julie. <laughs> <laughs> and this was Bisquick, helping small businesses across America.